Hey, Mathletes. Welcome to this video. What we're going to look at here is we're going to talk about the transformations of logarithmic functions. So it's really important at this point that you've mastered the graphs of exponential functions and their transformations, because in this video, what we're going to explore is how those graphs of exponential functions are going to help us graph logarithmic functions. Also, let's make sure that you've got your graphing calculator with you. That'll be helpful as always. Okay, here we go. So what have we got to do here? Well, the first thing I want you to do is to graph on the grid below y is equal to 10 to the power x. And we're going to label all, sketch all the important parts, right? The y-intercept and the horizontal asymptote. So if you recall, our original y-intercept without an a value is going to be at 1. The base is bigger than 1. So that tells me this function is increasing as x gets really large as x goes to infinity. The y values will go to infinity. So we've got our y-intercept is at 1. We've got a horizontal asymptote. Don't forget, right down here, initially, when it's not been transformed, it's at y is equal to 0. So now what do we have? We're gonna graph the inverse. So remember what it means to be an inverse. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to switch our X and our Y values. So if we switch our X and our Y values, looking at our exponential, our Y intercept would become our X intercept. Our horizontal asymptote will become a vertical asymptote and if we took the time to switch all the X and the Y values, guess what? There it is. There is the graph of x is equal to 10 to the power y. Okay, that's the graph of the inverse. And you probably remember from a prior unit that an inverse graph is symmetrical to the original graph about the line y is equal to x, just like that. Okay, so let's just kind of remember all of our key information here just to make sure we've got it down here. So our domain of an exponential graph is the reals. Our range is greater than zero. Our x-intercept, we don't have one, right? Not available. Our y-intercept is at one. And our asymptote is at y is equal to zero. Okay, so there's your, all your information for your exponential. So the inverse of an exponential, well, remember, if it's an inverse, what we're doing is switching x and y. And so this is why it's so important that you know the information about an exponential, because look, I immediately know the range of the exponential will become the domain of its inverse. The domain of the exponential will become the range of the inverse. The y-intercept will become the x-intercept. The x-intercept will become the y-intercept. So in this case, we don't have one. And our horizontal asymptote will turn into a vertical asymptote. Okay, this is a must know. Okay, that is an absolute must know. Now, the reason why I said, okay, have your graphing calculators with you is just remember that when we go to graph these things in our calculator, I've already got 10 to the power x in. And I've got a color calculator, so it makes it a little easier to see, but you notice over here, it sure as heck, the TI sure as heck makes it look like that graph is going to hit the x-axis, which we know it doesn't. Okay, now, how do I graph the inverse of this? What is the inverse of 10 to the power x? Well, what you probably know from your previous lesson is that the inverse of y is equal to 10 to the power x can be written like we did. But now what we do is we write this as a logarithm. We switch forms here. And what you probably again learned in the previous lesson is that my little expression is base stays the same. So it's log, the base right now is 10, and the other two parts switch. Now that's a oversimplification of what's occurring there, but that is exactly how we can write it. And so if we go back to our graphing calculator now, so if I want to put in that log, I can go and I'm just going to hit my up arrow here and you see log base. Now, this is a common log because it's base 10. So I don't really need to write the 10 there. I could have just hit my log button. 
beside the seven right there, but just to show you so you know it's there. And I hit graph. And again, look at that. The calculator does an even worse job graphing the logarithm. It makes it look like this graph kind of has a endpoint right there at zero, negative one, and it sure as heck doesn't, right? This graph continues down to negative infinity as the x values approach zero from the right-hand side. Okay, so we get a lot of questions on tests and on diplomas here about the graphs of logarithms because our graphing calculators do such a poor job. Again, it's important that you've got all of that information right there memorized. Okay, let's do a few questions. First thing I kind of want to go back and just recall, let's make sure we remember everything about transformations. So now that we know what the graph of log base 10 looks like, let's just go and transform these things just a little bit. So what do we remember? Well, A again is our vertical stretch about the x-axis or about y is equal to zero and we would say by a factor of a now how would this affect the key characteristics of the graph well the only thing that this vertical stretch is going to affect is it's only going to affect the y-intercept i lied to you that's an exponential graph this won't have any effect on it, right? Like it'll definitely vertically stretch everything, but it's not going to affect our x-intercept because our x-intercept is invariant, right? Okay, so the vertical stretch doesn't have a big effect here. The B value, well, that's our horizontal stretch. And our horizontal stretch about the y-axis or about x is equal to zero. And the key thing here is, again, it's by the reciprocal, so by one over b. Okay, this is the one that we're going to pay attention to because this will affect our x-intercept, won't it? Okay, so on a logarithmic graph, this will affect the x-intercept. Absolutely. Okay, it won't affect our vertical asymptote because the vertical asymptote's at zero, right? Okay, the h value and the k value, you know, those are the easy ones that most people remember. So the H value is a horizontal translation. And remember, it's going to go the opposite direction of that sign, right? So this is a horizontal translation. Now, the important part here, okay, this is the one we really want to pay attention to, is the horizontal translation is really going to affect that horizontal asymptote, isn't it? Right? We always want to know that this is going to affect that horizontal asymptote. In fact, the equation of our horizontal asymptote will be x is each equal to h. Okay? And the k value is our vertical translation. And up and down, depending on what number we have back there for k. And really, again, friends, what this is going to affect is it's going to take that x-intercept and it's going to move that x-intercept up and down, isn't it? So it's really going to affect that x-intercept as well. Okay, so we just want to keep in mind just what are those different values doing to our graph? Okay, what about if we change the value of the base? Well, just like exponentials, if the base is greater than one, the graph will be increasing. And if it's between zero and one, the graph will be decreasing. Remember, our base can never be zero, okay? And we'll never have a base that's negative. So what would a decreasing graph look like? Well, essentially, let's just switch here to the kind of a different color. All you're gonna picture is that this graph then would come down and do something like that, okay? So, Let's go and answer some questions. You probably remember all of that information, right? You're like, yeah, okay, I've been doing transformations. You see why transformations are so important. You've been doing them for so long. Okay, let's do a couple of questions. For the equation, y is equal to three log. And again, I don't have to write that 10. It's a common log, but I'm just writing it now. So y is equal to three log base 10 of two x plus four plus six. Okay, so state the transformations. First thing I always want to do is I want to look to see if I have to factor anything. And I'm not going to write base 10 because a common log, we generally don't write the 10. Okay, so I always want to factor. 
And then I'm going to describe the transformations in correct order, right? So stretches first. So the three, I've got a vertical stretch. And again, remember, no abbreviations. You won't get full marks. Vertical stretch by a factor of three. And you always have to state the line you're stretching about, about the x-axis. Then we've got ourselves a horizontal stretch. And this is the one that I'll see mistakes on, you know, still throughout the year. Horizontal stretch by a factor of a half, right? Not two, the reciprocal about the y-axis. Horizontal translation. And remember, we're going to go the opposite of the sign that we see there. So I'm going to say a horizontal translation, two units left. And a vertical translation, six units up. OK, so nothing too surprising in here, right? Now, even if the questions about a transformation, they don't ask us to describe them, I'm always going to describe them to myself in my head, right? I might not write them out because it takes a while. Okay. The things that we're really going to pay attention to in logarithms is where is that vertical asymptote? Okay. So an exponential, I always want to know where the horizontal asymptote is. On an X uh, logarithm, I always want to know where the vertical asymptote is. Well, remember the basics of this graph. It looks like this to begin. Right, And that vertical asymptote is that x is equal to 0. But if we've been shifted, our function's been shifted two units to the left, now the equation of that vertical asymptote will be x is equal to negative 2. Okay? That is a question we see all the time on tests and on diplomas. Okay? Is the function increasing or decreasing? Well, this function is increasing. And the word explain we see on the diploma right, quite a bit. Right? So we just want to be careful here about our wording. So I don't want to say it, okay? It is increasing. I don't want to say that. If I say it, I'm not being specific enough. So that's a problem right there. So don't say the word it on an explain question. What I want to see or hear or read is the function is increasing because the base is greater than one. Okay, so just a little word of wisdom there. Don't use the word it when explaining and describing things. Okay, the domain and range. Well, the range is the easiest one, right? The range is the easiest because the range will always be that unless it's some sort of application. The domain, well, again, the domain is going to depend on where that vertical asymptote is, right? That's why we always want to figure that out. So our domain of this function will be negative two to infinity. Okay, so again, that vertical asymptote gives you the domain. That's why we want to pay such special attention to it. Okay, good things to know. All right, we'll do two more questions here. So the graph of each logarithmic function listed below, where the base is greater than one, so that tells me this logarithm is increasing, has a vertical asymptote. So there's five functions here. The number of functions listed above that has an asymptote at x is equal to zero. So this was an old diploma question, friends, and uh, numeric response when it was on the diploma. So what does this mean? Has an asymptote x equals zero? Well, again, that original function, log base x, log base b of x, that's this guy right here, right? That's log base b of x, right? That already has a vertical asymptote at zero. So this guy does. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these other four and think about the transformations. Vertical stretch by two. That will not affect where our asymptote is. So that will also have x is equal to zero. Horizontal stretch by a half. Well, horizontally stretching by a half, well, the asymptote's at zero. So zero times a half is still zero. We're still at zero. Okay, the last two, I can see students getting mixed up. What this one is here, x plus 2, and that plus 2 versus the one on the bottom where it's in parentheses, that's a vertical translation, isn't it? That thing's going up 2. That will not, again, affect that vertical asymptote. So this one also is still at x is equal to 0, 
And finally, this last function down here, well, this function has been translated two units to the left, just like our function was in the last question. So the equation of this asymptote is at negative two. So the number of functions listed above that have an asymptote at zero is four. Okay, so not bad, right? Like that was a diploma question, not bad at all. All right, let's do one more. Another diploma question to finish the video off. So use the following information to answer the next question. So that's exactly how it looks on the diploma. A student sketch these two functions and where A is bigger than one. So always look at this and say, okay, why are they giving me this? Well, that's telling me that both functions are increasing. Okay, so the student sketched these things on a coordinate plane. She also drew the asymptotes of the two lines of the two graphs using dotted lines. The intersection point of the two dotted lines. Okay, so really what this is saying is let's find these two asymptotes, right? Okay, so let's draw a picture. When in doubt, draw a picture, right? I don't draw very well, but it certainly helps. Okay, let's do f at x first. So the first thing I wanna say is a logarithm so it has a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote originally is at x is equal to zero, but now we've been translated three units to the left. So our vertical asymptote and this student, she drew it as a dotted line. So that would pass through negative three, wouldn't it? And the equation of that line is x is equal to negative three. Now, what about g at x? Well, g at x, let's go pretty purple. G at x is an exponential, which means it has a horizontal asymptote which is the K value, right? Remember it was originally on the X axis. Now it's been translated up five. So there it is right there. There's our horizontal asymptote. There's the equation of that horizontal asymptote. Y is equal to five. So this says, okay, where's the intersection of these two dotted lines? Oh, it's right there, isn't it? So what is the coordinates of that point? Well, the X coordinates negative three and the Y coordinates five. There it is, okay? So it's always important with exponential graphs and logarithmic graphs, we always wanna know where those asymptotes are because those asymptotes provide us the domain and the range respectively. And from there, we can start to graph these things really quickly, okay? There it is, friends. There is the transformations of logarithms. I hope that helped. See you another time.